is the same salvation that Jesus Christ spoke about and the same salvation that Jesus Christ provided for us. So great salvation, which at the first uh, was spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. This is the same salvation the apostles uh, got from Christ and then they presented to us. This is the same salvation that all the ministers in the New Testament church and then first century until this time, uh, the same salvation that uh, Martin Luther preached, the same salvation that Joe Wesley preached, the same salvation that all the great uh, servants of God from that time till this time, what they have revealed unto us, how shall we escape if we neglect that? And not only that, God also confirming, bearing them witness, both were signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and the gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. We well, will not neglect. I will not neglect. I will not reject. I will not ignore. I'm talking to you tonight on the divinely revealed way of escape from eternal judgment. The divinely revealed way of escape from eternal judgment. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the incomparable gateway to the final escape. There's going to be a kind of judgment. There's going to be eternal judgment at the end of the life of everyone that comes to this world. And there is a gateway. We pass through that gateway and we escape that final judgment. The incomparable gateway. There's no other gateway like this. There's no other comparable gateway. There is no alternative. This is the way. The incomparable gateway to the final escape. Number two, the irreplaceable good way to the future escape. The escape we're talking about is not just escape for now. It's escape in the future. When that future time will arrive and when the day of judgment shall arrive, that escape at the future time, there is this good way, the only way that we can take so that we'll escape. And it is irreplaceable. A new generation cannot come and say, well, that one, that way is for the old generation. And that one is for our fathers and grandfathers. And that one is for, you know, people who have gone. We're discovering now a new way. We're discovering something totally different, you know. This way is the good way, and it is irreplaceable if we're going to have the future escape. Point number three, the incorruptible gospel way. What way are we talking about? It is the way that the gospel has outlined for us. And the gospel says, this is the way. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father except by me. The incorruptible gospel way for a full escape. Full escape. You escape judgment finally. You escape judgment now. You escape the consequences of sin today. And you escape the condemnation, damnation of sin in the future total, complete, entire, full escape, the incorruptible gospel way for a full escape. I come to number one, the incomparable gateway to the final escape. That's what he's saying. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 3. How shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, which had the force began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. And as uh, we talk about escape, this escape from judgment did not start uh, even in the New Testament. If you go back to Genesis chapter 19, Genesis chapter 19, you will see. And that's why the passage says, 
says the people that neglected or the people that refused the word spoken by angels they paid dearly for that look at genesis chapter 19 and i'm reading from verse 12 genesis 19 verse 12 and the man said unto Lot, Actually, these are the angels, but if Lot foresaw them as men, and the, men, the angels said unto Lot, As thou hear any besides son in law, and, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Judgment coming upon them. Devastation, destruction coming upon them. Condemnation of fire with fire here on earth and they all through eternity coming upon them. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons in law, a which a marriage is a daughter's, and said, Ah, oh, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. It's not a decision by angels, it's by the Lord. The Lord sent those angels, and Lord got the message. And Lord understood the message. The Lord will destroy the city. But it seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. They neglected the message. How shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, and when the morning arose, then the angels, you see, the people that are referred to as a man in a verse 12, we now know them and see them as angels. And when the morning arose, then the angels is in Lord, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. It's talking about escaping judgment, escaping the consequence of the iniquity of the people. And while he lingered, people can linger. I've heard, I think about it. I've heard, I will pray about it. I've heard, one day, one day I will decide. I have heard, and they are lingering. And people can get into the judgment by just lingering. Not by outright unbelief or by outright rejection, but by just lingering. It says, while he lingered, the men laid hold upon the sand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord be merciful unto him. Salvation is by the mercy of God. Salvation is by grace. And this was the grace manifested to Lord, the wife, and the two daughters. And he brought them forth and set him without the city. Look at what he said. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth that he said, escape for thy life look at the mercy of god and yet understand uh, there are two sides to the escape one the mercy of god two your own decision your own response and your own taking heed so that you will not be lost you know there are people that have the idea if he wants to save me he will save me Jesus Christ is merciful and Jesus Christ is great. He died for me on the cross of Calvary. I don't have to do anything. And there are people that say their gospel is the gospel of done. It's done. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to repent. You don't have to believe. You don't have to escape. You can linger. You can swim in sin and you can dive into sin. You can commit as many sins as you want to commit. It doesn't matter at all because it is done. No, it's done, but you have to do something. That's why it says over here that Lord and his wife and the two daughters, they had responsibility, something they must do. It came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life. Look.
walk not behind thee, neither stayed thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. You can see, be consumed. Even with all the mercy that the Lord has shown, if you don't do your part, well, while they were going, look at verse 26. Verse 26, but his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. She didn't fully escape. Thank God I will escape. Look at Jude, referring to what we have just read now in Genesis, Jude chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 7. Jude chapter 1, we're reading from verse 7. It says in verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, as such forth for an example of suffering the vengeance of what kind of fire? Eternal fire. They didn't escape all those people in Sodom. That's what the Lord is telling us now, that we have something to do, and you need to do it urgently. And you need to keep to what you've done, your decision, so that you will escape that final judgment. I'm reading from Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11, the incomparable gateway to the final escape. Job chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 13, If thou prepare thine heart and stretch forth thine hands toward him, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles, for then thou shalt lift up thy face without spot. Then thou shalt be steadfast and shall not fear. It says, if there's any iniquity in our hands, whether you claim to be saved or not, that's not the problem now. Whether you say I've been in the church for a long time, that's not the problem now. If iniquity be in thine hand, I come to church every time. If iniquity be in thy hand, I'm even a worker. If iniquity be in thine hand, the Lord is not looking at your church denomination. It's not looking at your area of service. It's not looking at the title you claim. It's not looking looking at any other scene, but if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away from thee. Let not iniquity, let not sin, let not wickedness dwell in your tabernacle. Look at verse 20, verse 20, but the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape. Anyone claiming a great title, anyone claiming a great ministry, anyone claiming a great a privilege, and yet if there's wickedness or sin or it's iniquity, it says they shall not escape, and their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. Thank God you escape. Thank God we escape. I had only the amen of those who are escaping. I'm looking at Ezekiel chapter 17. Ezekiel chapter 17 is the gateway of repentance and it's a gateway of turning from everything that is wicked, everything that is evil, and then the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus here comes and it cleanses your heart and it washes your life and it makes you presentable before the throne of the Almighty God. Ezekiel chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 18. Ezekiel chapter 17, reading from verse 18. Seeing he despised the oath by breaking the covenant when lo he had given his hand and has done all these things he shall not escape you see there are people they base eternal salvation on the decision of a moment i raised up my hand i gave my life to the lord i said yes to the lord and I temporarily, at that time, repented. And I asked him to come to my heart. 
a decision of a moment and a think now after that decision you could do whatever you want to do you could break that covenant you could forget your commitment to the lord you could forget the work of grace that the lord has done in your heart and just go on living merrily and in the world in all the sins of the world you break the covenant it says they shall not escape the way of escape is to make sure that we have come through the gate and we're walking in the way that leads to life everlasting verse 18 again see he despised the oath by breaking the covenant when lo he had given his hand he has given his hand to the lord he has given his heart to the lord he said yes lord i belong to you you are mine and i'm yours and then after that and have done all these things they shall not escape verse 19 therefore thus says the lord god as i live surely my oath that he has despised and my covenant that he has broken even each i will recompense upon his own head it's telling us uh, you know there is a way we ought to walk that's why we're told in, in hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 25 hebrews chapter 12 we're reading from verse 25 in verse 25 it says see that he refuse not him that speaketh, that he is, he's still speaking. He didn't only speak at the time you were born again, at the time you were converted. He's still speaking today, and he's saying, This is the way, what keep therein. This is my word, get up and obey my word. And this is my will, do my will, fulfill my will. See that she refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escaped not, who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall we not escape. We shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. You see that uh, there are some people that read their Bibles upside down. They say they go to seminary. They say they go, they, they learn theology. And they say that they have this perspective and they have this uh, kind of uh, learning in their lives. They say, they say, you know, the Old Testament was the time when they had to do this. They had to be righteous and they had to be free from this and free from that. And if they didn't do that, judgment will come upon them. But they say, you know what? We're now in the New Covenant and we're in the New Testament. Testament. And in the New Testament, once you have given your life to the Lord, that's Lord, that's final. And anything you do after that doesn't really matter. They say that even if you go into sin, because everybody, according to them, will keep on sinning, they say it does not matter at all. God looks at them through Jesus Christ, and then He has forgiven the sins you have committed and the sins you are committing, and the sins you will ever commit. They say past, present, and future, all the sins are forgiven. You have the license to keep on sinning. He has given you the license before you even commit the sin. They think they are magnifying the grace of God, but look at this, look at this. See that he refuse not. New Testament believers, see that he refuse not him that speaketh, speaketh, is still speaking today, and is still saying, this is my word, this is my will, and this is what you need to do. For if they escaped not in the past, who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we in the New Testament, shall not we escape if we in the New Testament turn away from uh, him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has a promise, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaking, as of the things that are made, that those uh, things which cannot be shaken uh, may remain wherefore we receiving a kingdom 
it says, as we want to have that final escape, therefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace. Grace is available today. Grace to heal, grace to strengthen, and grace to make you the man, the woman, the believer, the minister you ought to be. It says, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and tell me there godly fear verse 29 everybody one two three go read that again that verb there is it present or past tense tell me tell me present tense the people who say the god of the old testament is different from the God of the New Testament. And the Old Testament God was a God of wrath, indignation, judgment. He hated sin. But you know, the New Testament God, according to them, is an indulgent God, indulgent Father. You can see even before, under his nose, right in his sight, he just smiles and he says, in any case, you are forgiven forever. Not at all, not at all. The God of the New Testament is the same God that says, I'm God, I change not. I am God, I change not. And this tells us, for our God is a consuming fire. And I pray that fire will not consume us. We're coming to Matthew chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 13. Matthew chapter 7. We're reading from verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. This is the gateway to enter into the kingdom. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. And many there be that go in there because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. I pray you'll be among the few in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 48, I'm reading from verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 48, we're reading from verse 19. Jeremiah 48, verse 19. O inhabitant of Aurora, stand by the way, espy, see, look, Gaze, investigate, ask him that flees and her that escapes and say what is done. Ask him that flees, ask her that escapes, what have you done to escape? What have you done? to escape the judgment, the devastation. And so he says, don't just uh, cough it out from yourself. Don't just think it out. I think to escape, I think that's what I'll do. My thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways, says the Lord. Ask others that have escaped, the people that fled from the judgment of God. You can ask Isaiah, he'll tell you, Ask Jeremiah, he'll tell you. Ask Ezekiel, he'll tell you. Ask them, ask Paul, he'll tell you. Ask Peter, he'll tell you. can ask John, he'll tell you. The people that fled from the judgment of God and they received the mercy of God and they're now in the kingdom, they were in the kingdom here evangelical kingdom and then they are now in the kingdom over there everlasting eternal kingdom ask them what did they do how did they escape that brings me to point number two the irreplaceable good way to the future ex escape irreplaceable there's no other there's no alternative this is the way and i pray that you're walking this way in jesus name we're looking at jeremiah chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 16 jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 thus says the lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way 
and walk therein and you shall find rest not just for your body for your souls you shall find rest for your souls what's Isaiah telling us about the way you want to escape you want to get out of that judgment you want eternal judgment to escape you and to uh, get over you so that you will not perish forever Isaiah chapter 53 I'm reading from verse 6 Isaiah chapter 53 we're reading from verse 6 all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all soul. That's what Isaiah is telling us. He says the lamb that takes away the sin of the world is coming. And when he comes uh, through his chastisement to have peace, and then by stripes our soul, our mind, our body, our spirit will be healed. And he says, because God has laid on him the iniquity of all soul, he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb and so he openeth not his mouth he was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken he bought the pain he bought the uh, judgment he bought the chastisement and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased the lord to bruise him he has put him to grieve when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed and he shall prolong his days he's talking about his death and now he talks about his resurrection he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see of the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities that's the way that's the good way Isaiah tells us it says that's the lamb and is a final sacrifice is a full sacrifice he has totally fulfilled the demands of god's righteousness and so you can go to him and have all your sins laid upon him we're looking at jeremiah chapter 18. jeremiah chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 5. jeremiah chapter 18 verse 5 then the word of the lord came to me saying o house of israel cannot I do with you as this potter says the Lord behold as the clay is in the potter's hand so are ye in mine hand O house of Israel at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation or concerning a kingdom to pluck it up and to pull it down and to destroy it if that nation or that kingdom or that family or that individual anyone against whom i have pronounced turn from their evil i will repent of the evil that i sought to do unto them that's the way that's the way we turn from the evil the sinners have to turn from evil the backsliders have to turn from evil the careless believers who are neglecting their salvation the careless believers who live from day to day and 